Jesus know where he's leading you. He will never let you go. He will never let you down. Amen. That's the reason why we are singing that Emmanuel is here. We are testify that he, he is here. We are proclaim that Jesus will never leave us. Jesus is here. He's not far away, far away of us. He's here with us. He's in us. He will never let each. He will never. Uh, he will never let us down. He will always be with us. So when we'll be singing, feel free. If the if the spirit take you to to your knee, feel free to do it because God God knows how He wants you to, to to do thing today. Today is different. Today God want to do something for you and with you. Emmanuel is here. His presence is with us. Emmanuel is here. I know that you are here. Emmanuel is here. His presence is with us. Emmanuel is here. If you know that Emmanuel is here, it will be. Emmanuel is here. His presence is with us, Emmanuel is here, Emmanuel is here, is here, his presence is with us, Emmanuel is here, and I know that Adonai is here,
word. Say to Jesus, say that you trust Jesus, you believe in him. You believe in him because he know the way. He know the way better than us. He know where he is leading us.
your mercy never fail us, God. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will. your voice can you sing of your voice you have led me through the fire you have led me through the fire in darkest night in darkest night you were close I know I love your voice. Jesus, I love when you speak. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night. In darkest night. You were close like no water.
As long as I have breath in my lungs, as long as I can speak, as long as I can move, I will praise the name of the Lord. It may be a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. I don't know how I woke up that morning, how my body is reacting, how my mental health is dealing with me. How anxiety and all those things are trying to get to me. I will praise your name for you are God. I will praise your name for I have the opportunity and the grandiose grace to be your child. To belong to you. I'm a child of God. I praise you Father. I'm a child of God. I belong to you. Belong to you. belong to you Jesus so grateful to be your children Jesus so grateful to belong to you Jesus so grateful to be called by your name Jesus mm. in this country people have the, the habit of saying some of us we had no name we are not known our family name if it's mentioned out there it has no name but we have a name because of you <laughs> because of your name Jesus the enemy trembles before us <laughs> they may hear your famous names in this world but they will not tremble in the spiritual world but when they hear that I belong to Jesus <laughs> the enemy trembles those people who are famous and have so much money, when they get into the spiritual realm, nobody's scared of their names. But when they look at me, <laughs> when they look at me, the world may not know me, but they know you. And because of you, I am feared. Because of you, I'm protected. Can somebody recognize that? His glory, his power lies into the smallest things. He is an amazing God. And the wonderful thing about him is that whatever happened yesterday in Gabon will never happen to him. Nobody can ever overthrow him. Even when they thought that at the cross it was the end for him, they didn't know there was a resurrection coming. <laughs> he didn't cry out for help. <laughs> he didn't beg people to come and rescue him. He knew what he was going doing down there. What he was going to do down there. He why he was going and accepting I death to you. so that you and I may have life today. He is an amazing God. God with you we never have 
have to fear. Because of you, we never have to fear. We belong to you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Every day, oh God, I want to declare to you that I love you. Every day, oh God, I want to declare to you that I am proud to belong to you. Every day, I want to let you know that you are the best thing that ever happened to me. The best by far. Everything can be taken away from me. But I never want my faith, my love for you to be taken away. My salvation to be taken away. You are my everything. You are my everything. You are my everything. You are my everything. And I stand firmly on the knowledge of who you are and what you have done. I want somebody to stand and pray tonight. A lot of things are happening in the world. As you can tell in politics throughout the world, things are always happening. But right now, such pivotal historical moments are happening, not only in the world, but particularly in Africa. Has somebody realized that? That there is a shift that's happening things that were institutions uh, 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 powers that were there for many many years are being overthrown realities are changing forcing uh, forces are aligning together so that they can fight the things that have been fighting us for a very very long time i want to tell somebody when you see things on earth the, the bible says has the nature not taught you when you see things happening on earth and changing and shifting it means simply that spiritually speaking a lot of things are happening as well does somebody agree with this because nothing that exists on earth nothing that is happening on earth happens by itself there are things that happen in heaven first that's the reason why in prayer, when Jesus was teaching the apostles to pray, he said, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It always starts by heaven. So now as children of God, we are going to summon heaven for our lives and our families. This is a pivotal moment. If there are things in your family that were happening year after year, certain, certain strongholds that you could not read yourself of, certain uh, breakthroughs that you could not achieve, certain chains that could not be broken, right now, spiritually, there's a portal that is open. And I wish somebody could, could understand that. This is not witchcraft. This is what happens. When it's happening on earth, it means that in the spiritual realm, something is moving. Something is changing. And our God has control of all of that. So now I want to ask you, my brother and sister, understand this reality and take hold of the power that God gave you on your tongue and begin to declare. Begin to declare the change in your family. Say, barrenness is no longer going to be a portion of my family. Say poverty is no longer going to be cited, listed, mentioned in my family because things are changing. As they are changing on earth, as this shift is happening spiritually, I am taking hold of the, my power as a child of God and declaring that this spiritual shift is working in my favor. Come on, I want to hear your voice. Father God, Father God, there's a spiritual shift that's happening right now in the world. In the universe, forces are converging together to change things on earth. I stand as a prophetess of the Lord. I stand as your child. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus. Failure will never be the portion of my family. In the mighty name of Jesus, any stronghold, any stronghold that held my family captive is broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you want to clap your hands, go ahead and do so. If you want to walk around this room, go ahead and do so. This is a pivotal and powerful moment in time. Things are changing and shifting. I declare and I decree that divorce will never be the portion of the generations after me. I declare and I decree that poverty under any form, shape, 
or form will never be cited, mentioned, or seen in the generations from now till after me. From generation to generation, poverty will never be associated to our name ever, ever. In the name of Jesus, witchcraft will not be a portion. Witchcraft will not be a portion. Witchcraft will not be the portion of my family. In the name of Jesus, corruption in any way, shape, or form will never be a portion. In the name of Jesus, I declare it, and it is so in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree transformation, unbelief, unbelief will never be the portion of my family. Unbelief will never be the portion of my family barrenness in any area of our life will never be the portion of my family I come against it in the name of Jesus I come against any force that rise against my family I come against them in the mighty name of Jesus Satan you have no power over me Satan you have no power over my family Satan you have no power over the finances of my family Satan you have no power over the marriages in my family over the children and their academic success they will succeed academic failure will never be a portion in the name of Jesus academic failure will never be a portion in the name of Jesus failure in business will never be a portion we will not be duped we will not be stolen out of our money every time we invest in success is our portion I declare and I decree that success is our portion. I declare and I decree that when people are fleeing the land, we are buying in that land and prospering. Like you allowed Jeremiah, where people were running away because of war. <laughs> a land was proposed and he was able to purchase that land for a fraction of the price. That is the portion of my family. We will always be able to get items of great value at the lowest of the lowest of the lowest price I will never overpay for anything I will never overpay for anything any house any apartment I will no longer be a renter I will be an owner all of those in my family will be owners from generation to generation from generation to generation they will own everything they possess they will not depend on any debt mm. addictions addictions will no longer be counted they will not be mentioned any sort of addiction i come against it in my family in my life in the lives of my children my brothers and sisters i come against any type of addiction i declare and i decree it will not take hold of anybody it will not be mentioned in the generations after me in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus addiction to anything addiction to any substance any form of addiction any form of addiction will not take hold of anyone who shares my bloodline one way or another in the mighty name of Jesus beloved in this season as things are changing politically things are also changing when it comes to the social life socially the LGBT community is imposing upon us a certain way of thinking that even goes against basic biology people are born a male or female and they're telling us that it is a social construct while our God in Genesis said that he created them male and female brother sister this is the opportunity for you in this season that the shift is happening spiritually and socially on earth you will rise and say this will not be the portion of my people this will not be my portion it will not be the portion of my children it will not be the portion of my family it will not be the portion of my country it will not be the portion of my continent one way or another we will expose that wicked way of thinking we will expose that devilish way of thinking and we will be the catalyst of change throughout the world somebody's raising their voice right now 
somebody is pushing back the kingdom of the enemy for the sake of Jesus right now stand against those powers if you don't pray it's gonna come all the way to Kinshasa if you're telling yourself I don't live in Europe I don't live in the Western world news flash they are trying to come all the way to Africa and it's only your prayer that's gonna stop it right now come on somebody Homosexuality will never be mentioned in my family in the name of Jesus. Transgender behavior will never, never, ever come into my family, my country, in the name of Jesus. We will not bow down to that. Our government will not bow down to that. Father, give intelligence, wisdom to our people so they can stand firmly against those ways of living that are not of you, that are not of your kingdom. We push it back. It will never enter our country. We push it back. It will never enter our territory. We push it back. It doesn't belong in our families. Homosexuality will not be our portion. We will stand and live our lives according to what you have planned. According to the way you created us. Men will remain men. Women will remain women in the mighty name of Jesus. As a matter of fact. This country, this church will be a place where people are confused about their gender. When they enter here, their mind are renewed. Their mind are transformed by the renewing of the spirit. And they will go back and realign with what you have originally planned in the beginning. In the beginning, it wasn't like so. In the beginning, it wasn't so. I declare and I decree that it will be like in the beginning in this country. It will be the way you have planned it in the beginning in this country. No president will stand against you. No congressman will stand against you. No groupman will come against your will. If they rise, they shall be destroyed. If they ever decide to rise, we declare and decree destruction upon their lives. people praying in the Gabonese parliament after the power was overthrown they released and surrendered the country to Jehovah our president surrendered this country to Jehovah we stand on that prayer and we said father God words of our leader were pronounced giving you this country and because he gave you this country because he surrendered this country to you we will not accept any behavior that is ungodly in this country laws will not be passed promoting homosexuality and transgender behavior in this country men will remain men women will remain women by law or otherwise it is so we declare it to be so and we declare a curse and destruction on whosoever will stand in the grounds of this here country to dare try to change that your word will prevail. Jehovah, your word will prevail. Your principles and precepts will prevail. And nothing else. This country was surrendered to you. We stand on that. We stand firmly on that. We stand firmly on your word which says that every place that your foot will step on, I give it to you. You gave us Congolese or land and nobody because of any type of manipulation financially or otherwise will come and tell us how to raise our children will come and tell us how to live our lives they will be pushed back 
they will be cursed and destroyed if they ever dare come into this land and go against the laws of God. Come on, somebody. They are lurking around threatening your future offspring. This is the time you pray to set things for the next generation. Hey, anybody expecting to have children in the future? Anybody who has children on the way? Anybody who has growing children? This is the time for you to stand and rise. Not just thinking about back to school. <laughs> what school are they going to? Will they go back to a school where they teach them how to masturbate? This is not what will happen in this country. This is the opportunity for us to rise. Those things will not be mentioned in this country. Your prayer can change the atmosphere of this country. Don't tell yourself <laughs> what is that gonna do? What difference is it gonna make? I know of people, I know of people who are sitting in a room, just a handful of them, in a high place, in an upper room somewhere, just praying and crying and saying our leader is dead and now they're gonna get us too. <laughs> But as they stood there and prayed for the very first time upon the face of the earth, something new happened. Revival broke and they received the Holy Spirit. And from that moment on, the earth was never again the same. From that moment on, things changed totally. Can you stand with me? and believe that in this moment as we are here pressing into the presence of God it is possible for a special manifestation of the Holy Spirit to happen right here right now somebody say right here right now say it louder right here right now so I want you to pray like that and say God right here right now <laughs> pour out your power right here right now Pour out your anointing right here, right now. <laughs> right here, right now. Your power right here, right now. Anointing right here, right now. Your courage right here, right now. Right here, right now. Yes, right here, right now. Right here, right now. right here right now holy spirit come down right here right now clothe us with your glory fill us with the ability to stand against the kingdom of the enemy to not be shaken to not be afraid in any circumstance Give us the courage, as you said, that you did not give us the spirit of fear. 
You did not give us the spirit of fear. Give us the spirit, the spirit, the spirit that rises from within. Gives us the energy, the strength, the courage to press against the kingdom of the enemy and prevail and never stand back and never get weary and never get tired and never get anxious. We need you. We need you. to utilize a weapon of mass destruction in the spiritual realm. The language that only God understands, the language of angels, the language that the enemy cannot comprehend. Lift it loud. As you lift it, his power comes down. Renda Baba ya shende re 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 right here right now Renda Baba Baba ye I want the music to stop. Speak to your Lord. Stop the music completely. We're going to talk to God. Somebody talk to God. We came here to intercede. <laughs> he came to meet you here. What have you to tell him now? What have you got to tell him now? The Holy Spirit is here. Ready to manifest himself. 
Is there a disease? Is there an aching, a pain, a frustration, an anger, a bitterness, any type of anguish that you brought with you tonight? Sometimes you didn't actually bring it on your own. It just latches onto you and is with you everywhere you go. It's all right. It's about to be broken off of you right now. Don't whisper, my friend. When the pain comes into your body, it doesn't whisper. Don't whisper either. <laughs> Pray louder. It's not about the music. It's not the music that has the power. It is the tongue. <laughs> the Bible says that life and death are, are the power of the tongue. You have a tongue. Declare. Do you want life in your business right now? I don't hear you. I don't hear you. <laughs> At the end of service, somebody's going to come and say, Dr. V, pray for me. It's not about me. It's about him and it's here right now. Can you talk to him? You spend hours talking to your best friends and people who are going to go and tell something on, uh, behind your back. This is the time for you to talk to a person who has the power to do something. Other people don't. Even when they love and care for you, they may not have the ability to transform the situation. Only he can. Yet I don't hear you praying, brother. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we are here for you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, listen to the heart yearning, yearning, needing you. This is a time for breakthrough, oh God. God, I'm begging you. This is a time for breakthrough, oh God. It ain't about me. It's about your children. They need you. We need you, oh God. I'm desperate for you. I need you. I need you. My life is a mess without you. I need you. My emotions are a mess without you. I need you. We are here for you. <laughs> you say that you rejoice in our weakness because it's in our weakness that you show yourself strong. We are weak, oh God. Show yourself strong. We are weak, oh God. Show yourself strong. We need you. Jehovah, we need you. Jesus, manifest yourself. Holy Spirit, pour out your power and might. Chains are broken right now. I lift every burden in the name of Jesus. Anyone who walked in here heavy burdened, I lift that burden right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that was weighing heavy on your heart, almost strangling you, almost pushing down on your lungs to the point where you felt like you couldn't breathe anymore. <laughs> it is broken. It is lifted off of you in the name of Jesus. And you never return. Pain coming from the kingdom of the enemy. I declare and I decree that you come out of the life of my brother and sister right now in the name of Jesus. Peace is your portion right now. 
I break, I break the power of anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. Fear and anxiety. You come out of this place. You come out of every mind and every heart. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave every heart. Every mind that you have burdened. You have no more real estate in any space of their being. You come out right now in the name of Jesus. And forever you are casted out of their bodies. In the name of Jesus. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Peace is your portion. Peace is your portion. I'm not saying it just to say it. I see how the devil has just been pushing, pushing upon people's mind, giving them anguish and anxiety. You have peace in the name of Jesus. Peace is your portion in the name of Jesus. Repeat it right now. Peace is my portion in the name of Jesus. Peace is my portion in the name of Jesus. Peace is my portion in the name of Jesus. Peace is the portion of my family in the name of Jesus. Peace is the portion of my children in the name of Jesus. Anxiety and fear will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it. We have power. (laughs) You have power. Stand and declare it for your family. I feel so many people under the oppression of the enemy. You can't sleep at night. (laughs) As soon as you close your eyes, you can't sleep at night. Been watching the news too much. Been watching social media too much. And you worried about your future. You worried about tomorrow. You worried about your children schooling. It's back to school soon. (laughs) You have a powerful savior I came to tell you tonight. You have a powerful savior I came to tell you tonight. Do you believe that you have a powerful savior? You don't deserve to be in fear or anxiety. For every burden he carried at the cross. Can you stand and say I will not be afraid? I will not be worried, weary, concerned, frustrated, bewildered, anxious. That is not my portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Can we give a mighty, mighty hand of applause to our God? Does somebody believe? That was kind of weak. Does somebody believe that their God is the only one seated upon the highest throne there is? Does somebody believe that their very own father, their very own daddy, is the one who created the heaven and the earth? Not only did he create the heaven and the earth, he is the only master of the universe. The one who aligns every single thing, situation, circumstance, and can align it for your good. Can you shout? Can you shout? He is a mighty Savior. He is a mighty Savior. Oh God. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we love you. Father God, we honor you. You are everything to us. Master of the universe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I won't have you standing for too long. Those who know me know that I I just like worship and we could have just continued with worship and gone home. But I believe it's important for us to, to be strengthened by the word of God. The enemy is oppressing us. We're in a season where everything looks blurry, seems blurry. It's hard to understand. Um, Most of us, many of us are worried about the outcome of our country. Uh, It's funny how today, just today, I met quite a few people who were simply worried about back to school. Anguished about that. So many people looking at countries, you know, changing their, their mantra, changing 
their government, government being overthrown. And in our country, the elections are coming and people are weary. People are concerned. So many people are saying, well, uh, you know, November, December is not going to be a good time. You know, can I leave the country? What can I do? You know, is there anybody who, who's worried right now? Who's concerned? Trust me, there are a lot of people who are, it's not a shameful thing, you know. <laughs> people are just like, mm, if I say something, Dr. V is going to cast out some demon out of me. Uh-uh, it's not about that. But it's a reality. We are really living in the end times, right? And we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of the fact that the, the European powers coming down and being destroyed uh, 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 countries that are standing against France and the power of the European Union means a lot in terms of elements that are happening for the end times, right? So we need to be aware of that. We can't just be children of God and not know what the signs are that our Father is showing us in the world, right? So like I said yesterday, I'm not an expert in eschatology, which is the study of uh, the end time events. So I'm not going to go too much into the details of that. Those who dare read Revelation. <laughs> Come on, don't be so stiff. Don't be afraid. Your God is there. Your God is definitely there. But I, I want us to be aware. Sometimes we're just so worried about what is happening today, what is happening tomorrow, what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to, but we don't think about our real future, right? We don't think about our real tomorrow. We don't think about the stakes when it comes to being children of God. You know, if you, um, maybe here in the DRC, it's not really popular, but once you leave the country and you go to any technologically advanced country, you realize that they don't ca take cash anymore, right? And they don't take, you know, soon they won't take uh, regular currencies anymore because the countries that are aligning together um, to change the narrative with the dollar will soon switch to Bitcoin because all their currencies can come together and align. So they will create, they will more likely swift to Bitcoin of in, or any type of electronic currency, right? And so when that happens, you get to a point where they won't allow you to utilize cash. They won't allow you to utilize your bank card. And they're going to put a chip in you. And they're going to put a tattoo on you so that you can buy with that. Are you aware of the fact that we're going towards that? But I have a good news for you. As this is happening, now I don't know the timeline. Don't come to me and say, Dr. V, is this going to happen in 10 years? Should I get married or not get married? Matter of fact, I'm trying to get married. So listen, all right? <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> this could take 100 years. We don't know the exact timeline, but this is one of the signs that we have, that soon the, ha the rapture will happen. So don't quote me in you know, 20, 25 years and say, I never got married, I never built my house because you said it was you know, the end times. I didn't say that. It's being filmed. I didn't say, oh, I said it's a sign. Eh? That's all I said. But we have a good God. We have a wonderful God. Who knows that we have a good God? Hey, what kind of amen be this now? Say a good amen. A heavy one. Hey, hey, no, that's a good amen. We have a God who is strong. I think the last time I was here teaching, um, on a Thursday, I talked about um, the names of God. Who remembers that? I think it was well, maybe, what, a month and a half ago, was it? Two months ago? Somebody, um, see, at least you come to church. Anybody comes to church that can remember, like on Thursdays? <laughs> so we talked about God, who God is, and I'm going to quickly go through that and go to the next part of um, what I wanted to share with us. God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, right? Just in the nature of who he is, he is fulfilling promises to us. And I believe those who were there that night remember what I said. He is God. Sometimes you just say, God, where are you? He is omnipresent. You see? Is that question really valid? Think about it. The, the concept of om omnipresence means that you are 
present everywhere, right? And so when you have a problem and you say, God, where are you? Does it make sense? So maybe can we stop praying like that? Maybe. Maybe in a certain level, somebody can go to the extreme of saying it is a bit insulting to God, right? When you know that he's omnipresent and as soon as you have an issue, you say, where are you? He's there everywhere, but he's not manifested everywhere. That's a fact. So don't tell me I went to the club and I was, you know, grinding and stuff like that. And God, no. I started praying. I went to evangelize people. He will not likely, he's very not likely to manifest himself over there. Can we agree on that? Because some people have some level of craziness where they want to push God where he's just now even interested in going. Right? But God, by the nature of who he is, he's already telling you, I'm a faithful God. I'm going to be there no matter what, and I'm going to take care of you. The last time we read a piece of scripture, and I believe we can read that now, it was in Hebrew um, 6, verses 11 to 15. I'm going to read it quickly. Have you found it, somebody? Uh Hebrews 6, 11 to 15. And I have the amplified version, which says, And we desire for each, each one of you to show the same diligence all the way through, so as to realize and enjoy the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be spiritually sluggish, but you will instead be imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust and confidence in him and in his power. And by patient endurance, even when suffering, are now inheriting the promises. For when God made the promise to Abraham, he swore an oath by himself, since he had no greater by whom to swear, saying, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply you. And so having patiently waited, he realized the promise in the miraculous birth of Isaac as a pledge of what was to come from God. He swears by who he is, is the title of my message today. He swears by who he is. We know what swearing is, right? You swear. Usually is what? On the tomb of my dad, on the name of my family, on the head of my children. People swear like that. Here we say lie, right? I don't know why they do that. Does it mean that like if I don't do it, I'll be decapitated? Is that it? Wow. <laughs> Let me think about it the next time. Usually don't do that, but I'm just saying, people are actually saying, I will be decapitated, beheaded, if I don't do what I said that I'm going to do. And usually, we trust, right? We trust that our uncle, our auntie, whoever promised us whatever they said that they will do, will do it. But our God is God. And those people are human beings. So they could die tomorrow. So I can come today and promise you, okay, Fabrice, I'll do this for you. You know, I'll write, you know, good recommendation for you so you can get a job or whatever. And then next morning, I'm dead. Am I evil? Did I lie? Did I not say that I would do it? but I died, right? Or I was going to write a recommendation and then I get kicked out of the country for some reason. And I can't write a recommendation anymore. Or I get kicked out of my own job. 
where I could have written a recommendation for you and I lose the job and the company just says we needed to downsize and you know you are among the people affected by this change and so we need to just thank you and you go home. And so I'm no longer in a position to do it. Was I willing to do it? Can, can I? Okay. Are people alive? Can you wave if you're alive? So was I willing to do it? Was I going to do it? Was I able to do it? No, I was unable to do it because the circumstances changed. And so my willingness and my physical ability to do something did not necessarily get to the point of achieving the thing that I wanted to do. I was unable. I was willing. I didn't lie. But was, I was unable. When we say that our God is able... His ability to do things don't come simply from the words he utters. It comes from the nature of who he is. Because he swears by himself. That's the reason why he swears by himself. Because he's the only one who can never die. He's the only one who can never do evil. Meaning that no matter how the circumstances change, because he made you a promise... And you can never stand one day. He never wants you to stand one day and say, God is evil because he promised. Or God is unfaithful because he promised and he didn't do it. He swears by himself. Now you're going to tell me, Dr. V, how does he swear by himself? Why does he swear by himself? He's God. So if you ever feel like God has abandoned you, if you ever feel like God has forgotten about you, remember that he's God. In his nature, there's no evil. In his nature, there is no evil. Today we're living with people, I mentioned that while we were praying. They want to tell you that things are a social construct. You ask them the question, do women exist? Who are women? They'll answer you, people who believe that they are women. Who can birth children? People who believe that. No, it's not about believing. It's about being able to. We believe because we have a God that is able to. It's not our belief that makes him God. When people, I mean, I believed in you and you failed me. No, your belief doesn't make him God. I'm abandoning you because I believed you. Whether you abandon or not, he remains God. He remains able. If you did not receive that which, that, uh, the, the thing for which you were praying, there could be many reasons. But out of all of those reasons, God cannot be the reason why it didn't happen. Does that make sense to somebody? If there is any reason that hindered you from receiving what you were supposed to receive, can I be honest with you? Do you know the number reason, the, the reason, the first reason why you don't receive what you pray for? Do you know? Can somebody take a wild shot? The first reason is you. Always. Misunderstanding, misalignment with the word of God, miss something. Not even the devil. Do you know why? Because the devil can only push you to come against your own promise. Can I give you an example? You know the story of the young prophet, right, in the Bible. The young prophet, God sent him into a country to talk, and he told him, you go by one way, and when you return, you return by another way, right? He gets there, and he meets an older prophet, right? So after having prophesied for the city and telling them, you know, how God is condemning them and what God is expecting of them, the old prophet tells him, I also slept and received something from God. And God said, go back through the same way you went through. What happened? He believed. Without going back to God. He went back through the way that God told him not to go through. He died. Was it God's fault? Was it the devil's fault? The devil used the old prophet. It was up to the young prophet to go back to his God and say, you gave me an instruction. Now something else is being told to me. Is it really you? I want us, East City, to be that kind of church that focuses on God. 
Even when a prophet comes and tells you, if, if it's Dr. Atoms, if it's uh, uh, Pastor Freddy, Dr. V, whoever, we give you a word, go back to your God. Does somebody hear me? Go back to your God. Not that I don't believe in anybody's anointing, but I believe in my God more than I believe in anybody, including myself. So when I go back to God and he gives me a confirmation of what God said, he said, okay, so-and-so told you that it was really me. And you'll tell me why. These are people that I respect. They've always given a good word. That's true. Do you know Samson? Do you know the story of his birth? When he was about to be born, what did his father do? The angel came and, and found the mother, right? They had spent many years without having children. And the angel said to the mother, you will have a son and you have to do so and so and so. And when Manoak, the father, came back, his wife of many years, do you know the kind of drama this could have created? Hmm. This is your weekly novelas moment, right? So imagine, let's just call Samson's dad Edmundo. Hmm? So Edmundo came back and Fatma tells Edmundo, the angel came. We haven't had children. Can you imagine a woman who hasn't had children in a long time? Encounters an angel. First of all, it wasn't a regular thing that happened to people every day. We're so used to receiving a word from a prophet every day. People at that time did not do. They could spend a whole hundred years. God didn't say nothing. Okay? So this woman, this woman spent so many years. An angel comes. He speaks clearly and gives her instruction. And Mundo says, I will not listen. <laughs> Papa Ed. I can see your head frying on a pen right now. Hmm. The drama. But that's a story for another day. But he says, thinking about all the drama that could happen, thinking about everything else, going beyond his excitement. Brothers and sisters, let's stop being so overwhelmed by our emotions all the time. The spirit of the prophet is submitted to the prophet. Somebody else would have been so excited, jumping, running. Have you seen that on TV? People that receive, and it's not bad. Sometimes it's just the power of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes it's just stupidity. I'm sorry. I don't like to use that word, but it's just a little bit of nonsense. Yeah, you, you're jumping, you, you're screaming. But after the word, you don't go back to God to hear everything that he has as instructions for you to actually have that accomplished. Samson's dad went back. He said, God, can the angel come back? Can he give me myself, eh, my instructions? So I know when that child comes, what I need to do. So I may be sure to do exactly according to what you did. I pray that in your life you begin to do that. I pray that no matter who comes to you, who is anointed and powerful and can make a hundred people fall at once and can make money appear in all places, in your ears, in your mouth, wherever, know your God. He swears by himself. To the point that when Abraham was walking with him and God wanted to teach him how to pay a tithe of what he was doing, of everything that he was receiving as income and teach all of posterity the ways by which you can be blessed. God created a Melchizedek somewhere just to fulfill that. Do you know that Melchizedek is the only king whose genealogy wasn't known? They don't know his father. They don't know his mother. God created him for such a time as when Abraham had to meet him. I came to tell you today, your God swears by himself. He already planned the people who have to play the role that they need to play in your situation so that your blessing can come to pass. Can you imagine? Melchizedek wasn't a child. Melchizedek did not just get created one minute and then you, ate, you, you met him the next. Even Jesus, God could have just made Jesus come as a grown-up, right? He allowed Jesus to be born. So God allowed a Melchizedek to exist but have no genealogy. Become a king. Have everything that he had just so that one day Abraham could meet him and look at him and say, mm, this is God. 
You tell me, Mamanika, where do you get it from? It's in Hebrews 7, um, 1 to 10. And in allowing Abraham to give an offering to Melchizedek, he allowed Abraham to give the tithe, not only for himself, but for all the generation. Because they say, when he gave the offering, he gave the offering for Levi. Do you realize that every time you stand here, you're praying, you're giving an offering of prayer, you're giving an offering of praise, you're giving an offering of thanksgiving, you're giving it for generations that you will never see. Abraham didn't even know Levi would exist. He just knew God told him, you will have a great multitude of nations after you. By the time he's giving that offering, Isaac doesn't exist. Do y'all realize that? Do you all realize that this is one of the, the offerings that unleashed his blessing? I want somebody today to understand. Every time you come into the presence of God, every time you're giving an offering of any type of sort, be aware of what you're doing. Be aware of the fact that when I'm giving my offering, I'm giving it for the generations. It is not God that set up the blessing for Levi. Abraham, while he was giving, he was not giving for him alone. He was giving for all the generations to come. As he gave, he gave to Melchizedek, he said, I'm giving this offering. For my generation. His name was changed by God. A man who had no children. God tells him now you're going to be called father of nations. By accepting that name. He was already accepting the future and the transformation. I want somebody to understand. Right here, right now. Accept your future. You may not see it. They're calling you millionaire. Say amen. They call you DG. Say Amen. I always post a, a joke on, on, on my status. Somebody said, I, I was tired of going to school, but in the, my neighborhood, people were calling me doctor already. So I had no choice than to finish school. Can, I, I pray for God to rise people in your life, in your family, who will call you doctor every day until you become a doctor. People through their jokes, people through the nicknames they gave you will birth within you the kind of hope, the kind of courage to keep pushing through because you just can't fail because they've already seen grace upon you because they've already seen that you will do something else in your life and for you to know you are being backed by the one who swears by himself there's nobody greater so when somebody comes to scare you when somebody comes and says tell them I have a God Tell them I have a God. Out of respect because we're African, you don't need to tell them to their faces. But as soon as they leave, you say, God, you are God though. They are nothing. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Don't be scared of any kind of body. You have a God. And he stands on his word. He says in his word, I stand behind my word so that it can be accomplished. I stand behind my word so that it can be accomplished. Have you heard that verse one day? That's, that's the, the, the basis upon which he has his authority. And he has his faithfulness. He is God. He has no evil. And he stands behind his word. This is quality assurance. <laughs> Before human beings created quality assurance, God had quality assurance. He made sure my word is going, I'm behind it every single minute. When people say, I say this message, when they're doing politics, right? I declare this message and I stand behind it. I approve this message. God says, I declare you the head and not the tail. And I stand behind my word. Every single situation you're going through, I'm orchestrating things so that one day, no matter what, you end up being the head and you end up never being the tail. Can somebody's faith arise? Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't be bewildered. Don't be lied to. Don't be duped. You have a God. You have a true God. You have a strong God. You have the only true God who stands behind his words. And so I want you to stand right now and tell God, I thank you because you stand behind your word. You swear by yourself. 
you swear by your own name, no other name. You back up your own word. You back up your own name. You are faithful. Father, we thank you for you are faithful. Father, we thank you because you are faithful. We thank you because you are faithful. You swear by your own name. You swear by no other man name. And you stand behind your word so that it can get accomplished. Father, I believe that in my life, no matter the circumstances, I can stand firm on the mandate of your word, knowing that what you have declared in my life will come to pass. Knowing that you will change me, transform me, teach me, align me, so that at the end of the day, that which you had declared upon my life will come to pass. You are God and I thank you. You are God and I thank you for standing on your word. For standing behind your word so it may come to pass. You are faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Can we say all together, Father God, we love you. We believe that you are God. And that in you there is no evil. That in you there is no failure. We thank you. Because you stand behind your word so that it can be accomplished. And you swear by your own name. So we clap for you and we celebrate you. You are a faithful God. You are an almighty God. You are the all-powerful God. And what you say remains generation after generation. No matter the circumstances. No matter the economy. You are God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. What a joy to have you all here. Are there any, is there anybody who's here for the very first time? By show of hand, by raising of your hand, you can manifest yourself. So, ECD, we need to evangelize. Yesterday, we had no 